Hey everybody, and welcome to this episode of Transit Tangents. My name is Lewis. And I'm Chris. And today we are covering a topic that you've probably encountered at one point or another. If you've been on a road trip somewhere, or maybe your city has these in places along major highways and whatnot, uh, but we're going to be talking about tolling. And yeah. uh, fortunately for us, uh, this is another episode where uh, we've, we've got a subject matter expert uh, on our hands here. Chris, uh, Chris has got a lot of experience in the tolling industry. Yeah. For the last five and a half years, I've worked for a company that specializes in all types of transportation technology, uh, but my division specifically has been focused on toll roads mm -hmm. and specifically at that, automating those toll roads. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a, a topic that I'm, I'm very, very familiar with. Uh, and wanted to bring to the transit tangent community, to the gondola gang, if you will. Yes. Um, and uh, and talk about this mode uh, or this uh, this infrastructure uh, mode that we have. Yeah. So uh, as usual, though, we're going to kind of start off with a little bit of the history of tolling. And Chris found some really fun yeah. uh, things here. Uh, do it here. You can go ahead and share it because you found it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's great. I we'll do a quick uh, history here. Um, I was sort of looking back at the history of tolling in the United States, and I knew, you know, if you think about toll roads, we've been tolling roads and passages since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's literally in mythology where you pay a toll to cross the, was it the River Styx? Mm -hmm. Like, tolling is a concept that goes back, again, to the beginning of human civilization. Um, but tolling as we know it today, I wanted to look at the history of it, and I found it really interesting. Uh, first toll roads were called turnpikes. And I thought, well, that's a funny word. Why do we call them turnpikes? And that's mm -hmm. when I figured out that it is actually an old English turn, term, uh, turnpike, T-U-R-N, and then P-Y-K-E. Mm -hmm. uh, a pike was this barrier to any type of, of roadway or any type of passage. Mm -hmm. And it usually included pikes, which were... Like, uh, like spikes, like essentially. Spikes. Like a spikes. What do, you, what do they call them like in, in high-speed chases? You roll out yeah, the... Yeah, you uh, roll out the spike yes. thing. Yeah. yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> There's a name, but... but. <laughs> We don't know it. <laughs> I don't know what that's called. But uh, yeah, it would basically be like sharpened wood uh, uh, posts, uh, or posts yeah. spears, whatever, uh, on a roadway. And you would get to these checkpoints. And at each checkpoint, they could essentially turn them and move them off of the roadway or like turn them back into the roadway or whatever and allow passage through. Right. So that's where we get the term turnpike, which I thought was really, mm -hmm. really interesting. And there's a fun little bonus term here that yeah. was uh, added on here called a shunpike. And you're a you're a shunpike if you're somebody who avoids uh, toll roads essentially yeah. and sneaks around them on the free roads and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, shunpiking um, is where you deliberately avoid uh, toll roads. Isn't that also I'm, the last name? Frankly, of the... I'm a, I'm a shunpike here in Austin. I have my, my Google Maps set to avoid tolls <laughs> because there are weird toll roads in different parts of town, and I, I just like don't. Isn't like that also them. the last name of the the like bus attendant in Harry Potter? It's Maybe. Like, Ooh, I, I don't like know. Sam or Stan Shunpike. Let us know in the comments huh. if that's the case. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, oh, but anyway, so that's, that's kind of where all this comes from. Uh, in, in the UK, uh, we had sort of turnpike uh, authorities being created around 1706. Wow. Uh, it's called the Turnpike Trusts. And it, they started basically tolling these ancient roadways in the UK that the local residents were not very happy about this when right. these when these turnpike authorities were created. Uh, so this system of tolling these roads made its way to the British colonies and then after the Revolutionary War is when the United States uh, formally adopted turnpikes. Yeah. Um, so obviously like the, the, the first kind of couple here that, that were created are, are in kind of the Northeastern United States where there was this more density of people yeah. during that time frame. Uh, but in 1792, we had the first paved roads in the United States that were turnpikes, uh, and they were the Philadelphia and Lancaster turnpike, uh, which was the first paved road in yeah. the United States. Which when we say paved, it's really just like <laughs> crushed granite compacted, poured over the road, yeah. compacted. Yeah, it's not like what we think of as a paved mm -hmm. road uh, today. Uh, but yeah, the Lancaster to, to Philadelphia Turnpike connected Lancaster, Philadelphia mm -hmm. to, or Lancaster, Pennsylvania to Philadelphia. It was originally uh, 62 miles long. <laughs> Uh, and it was so popular, mm -hmm. not by the residents, but right. it was so popular by the local government that it created this huge boom in turnpike authorities all over the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And when I say a big boom, I mean there were over 50 in Connecticut and over 67 in New York. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. And well, I mean, at that time, there was no infrastructure, basically. I mean, imagine, you know, we're talking 1790s yeah. America. 
Uh, very fledgling nation, no right, money, right. Uh, really struggling to meet the bare minimum for our citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just you know, paying off a ton of war debt. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have this country that knows that westward expansion is inevitable, but there's no money to fund right. roads or to expand cities. Right. And so all of these turnpike authorities, which were originally private corporations, mm -hmm. they started building roadways. Right. And the federal government did want to kind of support this to continue happening. So the federal government did create... Uh, what was called the Cumberland Road, which uh, went from Maryland all the way to the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. And that spurred even more of these private turnpikes to be built off of this main road here. Yeah. Uh, just enabling further westward expansion, which would hopefully drive more population growth and more yeah. resources and more money and more tax revenue so that the government could kind of pay off all of these debts right. and continue to build up the infrastructure in the country. And if you have a city that, say, is 50 miles off of this Cumberland Road, you want your citizens to be able to reach the Cumberland Road so that they can get back to the more populated areas <clears throat> of the country so that goods can come into your city. Mm -hmm. And that's where all of these private roadways started to be created. And almost every single one of these private roadways had some type of toll right. associated. You also have to consider this was well before things like gasoline taxes, which we'll get into mm -hmm. in just a minute as well. Right. So there were, you, I mean, had there were no cars, so. you had to fund it. You had to fund it somehow. Yeah. Yep. Your hay tax. Um, you had to yep. pay the. You had to give your horse hay to. Oh my God, a hay tax. <laughs> that would have been the equivalent. A hay tax. Yeah, a hay wow. tax. <laughs> that's pretty. That's creative. Um, kind of a fun little anecdote that we found going through this was that uh, bice bicycles bikes were basically like the kind of culminating factor for a lot of roadway paving in the U.S., which yeah. is kind of amazing. Uh, it was, I want to get the name of this, the the Progressive Good Roads Movement uh, from 1880 <laughs> to 1920. Uh, yeah. really led to kind of the paving of more roads in the U.S. Yeah, it was started by cyclists who wanted better roads to get around their cities and to get sort of into the outskirts of the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, and so more companies started creating paved roads. And again, this is later 1800s. So from the first toll road to here, there's just all this rapid expansion of private mm -hmm. corporations. Now mm -hmm. we're looking at more organization and, and uh, more expansion mm -hmm. uh, of these paved roads. And yeah, it was bicycles. <laughs> So if anybody ever tells you that roads aren't meant for bicycles, they're wrong. Right. A good reason that those roads existed in the first place was because of right. the bicycles. So. It was better paving yeah. technology came mm -hmm. out of it. Uh, they're the ones who got together in four cities to really start um, building better roadways. They made it a political movement. Literally, mm -hmm. bicyclists are the reason that roads became a public priority. Which, man, what a, what a you know, you want to say that it's a good thing, but maybe it just spurred a whole, you know, led to paving, led to more cars, led to the, all this stuff. Well, is it really the pre car? The no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but the funny thing about that, though, is by 1910, the American <laughs> Automobile Association did actually join the Good Roads movement and mm -hmm. not only joined it, but took it over. Okay. So car ownership became the priority. Uh, these car lobbies seized this uh, progressive movement of the Good Roads movement and started uh, pressuring cities to make roads uh, better for cars right. and not bicycles. Which has spiraled us to the situation we're in today as far as roadways yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go and whatnot. But not to skip ahead too far, <laughs> uh, after World War I, uh, we had the Federal Highway Act of 1921, uh, which funded interstate highway construction. Um, and tolls at the time were used to fund that infrastructure yeah. investment that was going yeah, on. Yeah, this is this is pre-interstate system of what mm -hmm. we think of as interstates today. This is creating the U.S. highway system. So think of like U.S. Highway 90, uh, U.S. Six, uh, Route 66, mm -hmm. sort of these interstate uh, travel roads. Right. In many uh, cases today, they're not going to be the kind of like divided highways that you see, right. but they'll be the major kind of like one car lane in each direction, double yellow line down the middle. You know, they're still generally like a 55 mile an hour mm -hmm. speed limit or something, and they go between these cities, but they're not necessarily the kind of divided highways that right. we have for the interstate system. Yeah, yeah, and they, they spurred this huge boom in automobile ownership because now there are roadways for you to be able to go out and joyride or get from one city to the other. And by the end of the 20s, over half of American households had a car. And I didn't realize that it happened quick. that quickly. Yeah. But by the 20s, half of American households had a car. Yeah. And I mean, absolutely crazy. That uh, reference back to our kind of episode about Amtrak, I mean, seeing how quickly it went from 96% of passenger railway, uh, sorry, 96% of like city to city travel being on passenger railways dropping so quickly. Yeah. I mean, the, it's because of how quickly everybody got into cars and how how you know the car makers were able to make cars affordable pretty fast as well within yeah. within like 15 years of half of americans owning cars uh or 15 years prior to that people were still taking steamboats up the mississippi 
that that transformation <laughs> happens so right so fast right yeah we talk about like technology changing things now quickly yeah. i mean like that, that that's a very that's a whole other type of technology yeah. change that happens so fast yeah so to support this big boom, you cities uh, and states had to build more roadways, and the federal government didn't really provide a lot of money toward roadways. A lot of it was left up to the states to build out this infrastructure, and just like today, states didn't really have the funds to build <laughs> these roadways. So the vast majority of them uh, ended up going back into some type of tolling scheme <laughs> to help fund and pay for uh, these roads. Um, once we got to uh, World War II, just after World War II, uh, tremendous boom in automobile ownership. Again, we saw uh, sort of the the expansion into suburbia, uh, which needed more roadways mm -hmm. to support. And so that's when the federal government got serious about looking into uh, better federal highway infrastructure. Right. And what's interesting about that federal highway infrastructure, and there's an interesting book you should check out if you are interested in this, uh, that covers some of the history actually mm -hmm. with Eisenhower passing all of this legislation. It's called City Limits by Megan Kimball. Um, but uh, that infrastructure was actually put in for like safety reasons. It was a it was a, a, the military mm -hmm. purpose of being able to have our military be able to move across the country quickly. Uh, because as you said in a much earlier episode, like you know, there's a story about a, a an army platoon or something trying to that Eisenhower was in right that <laughs> trying to get from one side of the U.S. to the other, and it took an insane amount of time yeah. to do so. The roads were super disorganized, poorly maintained. And that was kind of the reason for the interstate system. It wasn't necessarily to like solve traffic getting between cities or even like helping traffic within the cities. In fact, uh, in some digging in this book, uh, the author finds notes uh, from Eisenhower where he specifically says that it's not meant for travel within the cities and that states were taking advantage of this money mm -hmm. to do so. But, um, but nonetheless, that's what it ended up being used for yeah, absolutely. Uh, because the federal government was offering to pay for 90% of the costs of these interstate highways, leaving states only having to cough up the remaining 10%. Yeah, and we um, needed it for defensive reasons, but the way you sell it to the public is think of all of the commercial opportunities right. and the investment in the community. Yes. And it did do that. It oh, did yeah. create massive amounts of commercial activity all around the country. It was a major investment in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's interesting about that, um, the what is it the federal uh, federal aid highway act mm -hmm. uh, when that passed there were provisions in there that federal roadways because it was being used with federal money weren't to be told mm. so all of the initial interstates there was literally legislation that said you can't toll these roads right and, and that, that was kind is kind of a, a first for it's kind for of a the first US. exactly yeah. and it's something that has stuck in this sort of uh, culture of the U.S. for a long time. I don't know how many people I've had a conversation with about toll roads where they say, well, it's not supposed to be tolled. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Right. But yeah, in the, in the very beginning, they're right. Mm -hmm. The Federal Highway Act, uh, they didn't want interstates to be tolled. Right. Uh, in fact, by the 1960s, about 1963, um, all roadways that were planned before this Federal Highway Act had pretty much been opened at this point, mm. and there were no new toll roads after 1963, uh, with some few exceptions, pretty much tolling uh, major roads had stopped. Hmm. We're going to jump right back into this episode in just a second. But first, if you have not liked this video, go ahead and do so. Also, leave a comment. We love reading all of them and respond to as many as we can. Uh, and be sure that you are subscribed so that you catch every episode as they come out. Please share this with your friends. And if you don't have time to watch YouTube videos in the future, you can catch us on any of the podcast platforms that are out there. Uh, just be sure to leave us a rating and uh, give us a comment. Uh, then, you know, after this period of tolling not really happening, we kind of fast forward to 1980 and wear and tear on the highways is really showing uh, because of how much use they were getting. Uh, you know, trucking like mm -hmm. increased massively. Obviously, regular people were driving back and forth, but uh, with all of the big heavy trucks going back and forth utilizing this that maybe weren't going to be utilizing that previously where, uh, you know, the cargo rail lines would have been carrying a lot of that now. In many cases, it became more efficient to put them on a truck yep. and take them directly to their destination. So uh, there is now start to be a lot of questions about how are we going to maintain the system now that we have built it out to the extent that they did. Yeah, cities and states were happy to accept the funding in the beginning, but then it comes back on the cities and states to maintain this infrastructure. Right. Uh, and that was a major problem. So in the 1980s, this, like you said, became a, a major issue and cities started to think, well, what do we do uh, for the future? And the federal government also realized this is a problem. Hmm. So in 1991, Congress passed uh, federal legislation that amended the previous Federal Aid Highway Act 
uh, and allowed for tolling on roadways in limited cases. Mm -hmm. And those limited cases were usually when a tolling facility, uh, or excuse me, when a, a road facility was being rebuilt, like a new bridge, a new tunnel, or you know, a completely new <laughs> spur to the interstate, uh, that sort of thing. So from 1991, that's when we start seeing local agencies and cities and states really start to focus on uh, new toll roads, which led to a big boom over the next um, two decades, really. Right. And I, I don't know exactly the details of how this one works in particular, but like growing up in upstate New York, the New York State Thruway, which is part of Interstate 90, is tolled all the way across the state of New York. I know in the parts of Massachusetts it is too. So even today, some of these interstates are tolled, but in some states they're not at all, and they're not allowed to be in some states based yeah. on those state laws. So right. uh, yeah, it, just an anecdote that I, I had. I mean, it, it actually is a, a decent price too. I mean, mm -hmm. getting from Rochester to the Massachusetts border, I remember, I think it's 14 or $15 in tolls just to drive on the interstate through there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. So after the 90s and, and sort of this boom in toll roads, what you started to see was um, a return to this this tolling system. Uh, so a lot of uh, facilities that went up, especially within those first 20 years, included what you think of as a toll road. You, you're driving up to a booth, <laughs> mm -hmm. there's an attendant, you're throwing coins at them because you're angry yes. about using a toll road. <laughs> uh, but there's, you know, there's an attendant, you, you have to stop and, and then proceed through the booth. Um, fast forward to today, most of those toll roads have actually been completely automated, mm. um, which is uh, a, a pretty cool use of technology. Mm -hmm. um, we've now sped up traffic and reduced some congestion on these roadways um, by allowing sort of this, this free-flowing uh, way to collect tolls. How most of those work is that you have some type of transponder in your car, a little sticker like a, or an easy pass or something right. like that, and uh, as you drive through what we call toll gantry, the... Uh, RFID chip is read by a reader somewhere above you or next to the car, uh, and it knows exactly who you are because mm -hmm. your your customer identity is on this right. this RFID chip. Um, the, another way of doing this is if you don't have that RFID chip, uh, you can uh, just drive straight through the toll gantry, and the whoever the agency is will take a, a, a image of your license plate, mm -hmm. and then you can actually. Uh, look up the customer via the DMV databases and that kind of stuff there. So there's multiple ways to sort of collect tolls now mm -hmm. that don't require you stopping at a booth. It's very fast. It's very efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're doing this, you are helping support the roadway that you are driving on. Yeah. And speaking of supporting the roadway that you drive on, uh, the main way in a lot of cases today that that is done is through the gas tax. Yeah. Uh, and for the most part, uh, the federal government hasn't increased the gas tax since the 1990s, the early, early 1990s. 90s, yeah. uh, so the federal gas tax hasn't gone up at all. Most states, it hasn't gone up at all. Some states have increased it in, yeah. in one way or another, kind of depending on the politics of the state, frankly. Um, but either way, uh, I think it's important to note that these gas taxes and your vehicle registration fees and the tolls they don't get close to covering the cost of the no. roadways. The roadways are heavily subsidized by the federal government, by the state government, um, and they're no way close to paying for themselves, um, which is a fun thing to point out if you're having a discussion with somebody who thinks that public transit is a waste of money or things like yeah. that. Uh, you can remind them that their roads are very socialist and uh, <laughs> that they're being heavily subsidized by people who don't own cars and the like. Uh, a lot of very car-brained people uh, like to think that uh, the roads are, are you know, paying for themselves and everything and that they pay for it through the gas tax. And in reality, it's somewhere in the realm of like 50 to 60% yeah. is maybe covered, but they are heavily, heavily subsidized. <laughs> Just wanted to put that out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that is that is the argument for toll roads. Look, yeah. nobody likes to, to pay for toll roads. Mm -hmm. I get it. Nobody's mm -hmm. excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first took the job in this industry, I remember my boss, uh, now boss, specifically said, this is not a sexy industry. <laughs> um, nobody, nobody loves it. However, this is the argument for uh, toll roads. And mm -hmm. that is, again, the way that most states and municipalities raise money for road construction is through the gas tax. And at the time, that seemed like a really fair way to do it. The more you drive, the more you're going to pay for that roadway. Mm -hmm. But if we don't increase the gas tax to help pay for those roadways, we're slowly taking money out of that system. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, the purchasing power for the amount of the 15 cents or however much it is that goes towards road construction projects uh, hasn't increased with inflation. Right. So you're just further eroding this base. Right. Um, right, especially on like road, road construction, construction of any sorts of things right now, like the prices have ballooned like yeah. crazy. Um, we see that with, with roadway projects, with transit projects, whatever it may be. 
And I mean, it is one of those things too, I mean, to just like counter a little bit here, because I'm, I'm in favor of tolling in the vast majority of cases here, but you do want to be careful in some areas where, you know, if, if you're in a part of the country where public transit is little to non-existent, basically, uh, you know, increasing gas taxes too much, having the price of tolls be too high, you're going to be hurting, you know, regular working folks, yeah. lower income folks who are relying on these roadways to get to and from work. But I would make the argument that in places where there are good alternatives, where you don't need to drive on the highway to get mm -hmm. to the location or where there is really good public transit, a good example is like we talked about on the congestion pricing episode in New York City, you know, do you need to drive your car into lower Manhattan? Right. Are there better alternatives or other alternatives that are basically just as good, if not better than driving to get to that place? Yes, there are. So I'm very much in support of a toll in an instance like that. But in other parts of the country where folks are relying on a car and there's really no other option, it becomes a little trickier. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that, which is why um, there's multiple types of tolling. There's open road mm. tolling, which is where all the lanes are tolled and it's all free flowing highway. There's uh, projects like express lanes and mm -hmm. HOV lanes. I really like the idea of express lanes because yeah. you get to choose whether or not you take the tolled lane, mm -hmm. and it theoretically should be faster than, than normal traffic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So there, there are many options out there that states and cities are starting to employ that are, are aimed mm -hmm. at, at allowing people who have the means to use the system to mm -hmm. use the system. Um, but there are definitely communities out there that have been sort of cut off from their cities uh, and, and it costs more for them to get in, and that does hurt those communities, especially when you talk about cities uh, like Austin, where a lot of the lower income population has been sort of forced out due to mm -hmm. high property taxes, and then they're also getting taxed to get back into the city. Right. That being said, you still have to pay for the roadway, but uh, there may be means of that agency of giving discounts to these communities or right. whatever the case may be to, to lessening that blow. Totally. Something else that's really interesting that not many people are going to think of right off the bat with, um, <laughs> with what is impacting uh, the amount of money we have for roadways but fuel efficient vehicles and electric vehicles mm. actually take away from the overall road budget. Right. And that is so counterintuitive. It's not what you would think right. that those actually hurt our, our transportation budgets. Mm -hmm. But right now they are. And a lot of cities and states have again- And to be clear, the, re the reason is because they're not paying a gas exactly. tax basically. Their yeah. EVs yeah. aren't paying a gas tax and uh, more fuel efficient vehicles mean we're using less gas mm -hmm. for the same amount of distance. Those are great things. Right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not arguing against those. Yeah. Those are amazing things. Mm -hmm. Uh, I absolutely support more EV adoption right. uh, and more hybrid adoption, that sort of thing. Um, but it, in real money, it does take away from uh, the overall budget of the state agencies. And there are agencies and states now that have uh, looked at this and now your registration fees may be a little bit higher. In but an again, EV that's, or a, yeah, yeah, for yeah, an yeah. EV or something. I think Texas is doing this. Mm -hmm. California has done this. Um, <laughs> but your, your EV registration may be a little higher because that money then goes back into right. supporting those roadways. Yeah. No, that is an interesting one that people definitely don't think about. And it's an argument for kind of uh, rather than messing with gas taxes, just like increasing tolling or increasing registration fees or finding another way to collect fees for yeah. roadway usage essentially yeah because um, no one in the country really <laughs> pays the amount they need to to support the roadways right again we have, yeah, we have expanded heavily subsidized we've yeah. expanded to such a point this is, goes back to the argument we made in our episode about suburbia mm -hmm. and can we fix it uh suburban the suburban landscape is a drain on uh cities and the regions because again you have all of this pavement you have all of this infrastructure and it costs a lot to maintain right yeah and it's it's also really interesting because you also think about major you know, capital improvement projects to these cities and these regions. <laughs> I think of um, on I-10 in Louisiana, mm -hmm. we mentioned the Calcasieu Bridge that they're going to completely replace. Mm -hmm. That is a huge undertaking by the state government. The federal government's actually paying for a significant portion of this bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of this new bridge in Alabama where I grew up in Mobile. They are replacing the Bayway Bridge and building it up to the, the right federal height. They're replacing these tunnels that currently uh, restrict the amount of traffic that can flow under the river in Mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of building this bridge is more than the entire DOT budget of the state of Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no viable right. way yeah, yeah, yeah. to build it unless you are adding tolls to the roadway. And, and is that what they're doing in that Absolutely. case? Absolutely. Yeah, they're yeah, adding yeah. tolls to the roadway, which... Another funny story, but it, that that roadway, the tolling was actually canceled for a while. 
the project got put on hold. Mm. Suddenly, you know, two years later, when the pressure's off the governor, she said, oh, let's let's build right. the bridge. Let's and, toll it. She and, won and, her election. And, 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 and there's going to be some tolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah just huh. a funny, funny anecdote there. Gotcha. Um, but just some, some quick numbers on the tolling industry in the mm -hmm. U.S. Um, right now, 35 states have active tolling projects. So, again, you've probably come across this if you're listening to this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also got $13 billion in toll revenues being collected by U.S. agencies. Uh, that's a little outdated. because 2015, from, yeah. yeah. Um, so that number's definitely gone up since yes. 2015. But a sizable amount. And, I mean, if, if you were to do more of it, you could probably fill the, the subsidy gap on the roadways a bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over 5.7 billion passages on toll roads since tw uh, going back to 2015 as well. So, again, that number has definitely uh, increased as well. We also have $14 billion in capital investment over three years by the top 40 U.S. toll facility operators. So uh, those are roadways that are being told and putting the money back into those roadways yeah. uh, that they're using. I mentioned the New York State Thruway as an example. Uh, one thing I will say about the New York State Thruway, when the construction isn't happening, the road is one of the like smoothest roads I have been on, yeah. which is a uh, far cry. I, I at one point did a uh, six month like road trip across the United States. I lived in a half size school bus uh, driving around rock climbing and, and mountain biking yeah. and whatnot across the country and experienced some terrible roads uh, on interstates <laughs> oh, in sure, some yeah. states. Uh, New York is not one of them. Uh, yeah. That road is immaculate <laughs> always, basically. So yeah. just an anecdote. But uh, one that kind of surprised me: uh, toll roads have a a higher uh, safety rate as far as um, hmm. vehicle fatalities. So interesting enough. I wonder if part of it has to do with like the roads being better maintained and having like better, you know, at night seeing lines yeah, painted better perhaps. and not avoiding, you know, yeah. that sort of stuff. That's an interesting yeah. one. Could be could be a whole host of reasons, but. Yeah. Um, all of this is to say there's a lot of investment right now going in, in toll roads around the country. And a lot of people, I think, have this misconception that toll roads are something new or that we're just, you know, the, the, the government's just trying to get more money out of you. When in reality, this is how society has operated Forever. until we decided to build the federal highway network. Yeah. But this is how society's always operated. And what we realize is, uh, I would almost say the federal highway, not that it was a failed experiment, but the, the idea that that it would be entirely covered by mm -hmm. federal money and then not have to touch it again. Mm -hmm. That was a failed line of thought. Right. And now we are on the other side of that and we're improving our roadways and this is one way to right. do it. And I think if we're going to ask people to pay for transit every time they use public transit, uh, you know, it's a reasonable request to pay. It doesn't have to be a lot of money, but right. to pay a small user fee when you're driving places feels reasonable, uh, especially considering, again, that we ask people to do that on, on the transit side of it. So, um, you know, uh, can they be annoying? Yes. Yeah. Uh, should they be everywhere? I don't think they need to be everywhere. No, I don't think but so either. But there are strategic places and, and areas that they definitely should be used. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all that being said, uh, what is your experience with tolling? Are there tolls in your state? Are there not tolls in your state? Uh, let us know in the comments. We, we, we love to see it. Have we changed your mind on tolling? Is yeah. there any new information from this podcast that you didn't know? For instance, usually when I tell people, hey, EVs get to use the roadway for free in a lot of places, they, they're like, what? Yeah. What do you mean they get to use the road for free? No, that's So it. if there's any information that you learned today that maybe changed your mind, uh, definitely let us know in the comments. And uh, with all that being said, if you haven't liked this video already, please consider doing so. If you're watching on YouTube, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you're listening on a podcast platform, uh, please give us a five-star rating. We'd love to see it. Uh, you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, all those places. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to support the podcast directly, uh, you can do so on our website, trendatangents.com, and look for the support section. Yep, you can absolutely. also do so, uh, this is a new thing, in the comments on YouTube. I believe you can leave a sticker or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but if, uh, we, we just appreciate you watching anyway. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Absolutely. If you know Pete Buttigieg, uh, send him the link to this. We'd love to <laughs> hear his thoughts on toll roads as well because he's going to be our best friend someday. Yes. So. And uh, with all that being said, uh, thank you all so much for watching and we will see you on the next Transit Tangents Tuesday. Car, yeah, I'm saving that dough. Public transit's where it's at. Watch me go.